Hey, what's up guys? I wanted to give you guys a quick update on where I am with the truck. I've made a ton of progress. I still have a lot to go, but I've really made a ton of progress on, on getting this thing closer to being buttoned up from a cab perspective and, and hopefully getting it closer to being on the road. So today's gonna be kind of vlog style. I'm just gonna walk you through where I am with some of this stuff. So first things first, you guys can see what I've done on the cab here. Um, obviously got the rust cleaned out. I've got a ton of metal work done, a bunch of patch panels. You guys can see I had to replace a ton of metal here. R really my idea on this was just trying to get the cab sealed up correctly. Like this metal work isn't by the book. This isn't a customer type of a project where everything needs to be dialed in. You guys can see some of the, you know, patches that I put in are, are not perfect from a aesthetic standpoint but structurally they just get the cab sealed which is exactly what I was after um, also I ripped out what you can see I ripped out where the the normal seat mounting frame that that is there on these 47 to probably 55 Chevy trucks there's an actual frame that's spot welded along this section that I ripped out because I've got a custom seat going in that I've got right there out of a later I think eight out of a later 80s Chevy something like that so I'm really getting this ready to do pour 15 so cab work is all done I literally filled up all of the holes over there um, here's a quick little uh, pro tip one of the things that th these cabs have a million holes in the firewall millions of them you can see one uh, down on the bottom here that's still left that I have to do but these things literally there's I don't know why there's so many holes um, in these cabs but there are and what I did from a welding perspective is I would find a hole, and again, this is a hood mounting hole, but so this isn't a good example, but I would find a hole like that and I would find a washer that was about the right size with a real small hole in the middle. And my little trick or tip there is put your washer up against it and weld the washer to it. Again, because I'm not trying to have it be flat on both sides or, or flush rather. Weld the washer to it and then fill the washer hole. For me, for a lot of this stuff, it worked out pretty well. And by the time you got it ground down, um, it was pretty 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 good turned out pretty good um, the other thing that I would recommend doing if anybody's doing a ton of metal work is pick yourself up a one of these little guys one of these like little copper spoon guys you use this as like a backing when you're getting ready to weld something like if you're trying to weld up a hole like this you would put you would put this copper backing plate in there and you can actually weld the hole because the weld won't stick to the copper so something like this is actually super handy for doing repairs like I was just doing um, so that, that turned out really well. So the cab is, is actually pretty close, pretty close to being ready to go. My next step here, um, after I finish mocking up the rest of the pedals, um, is to start doing the pour 15. Uh, I've already got the column mocked up. I've got a couple of other like little column parts over there to make it look um, smooth where it actually transitions. I'll walk you around here. Smooth where it actually transitions down into the floor. So you can see right in, in that area down there where it transitions, I've got a um, little product that I think was probably first used as like a transmission cover mount, but I've got it bent to the right profile to match what we got going on down there. And this is gonna seal up the column really nice. Um, the other thing is this is a custom mount brake pedal setup, and it's kind of tough to see, but you can see a little bit in there. Um, it mounts because the original configuration, the brake pedal mounts through the floor and comes up and I didn't want that so I had to hang pedals I've got a new brake pedal hung and the linkage actually connects up underneath here supports where these column mounts so that's nice and then the pedal swings down and I'm, I'm mounting up all the um, the rest of the linkage there <clears throat> to mount to the hydro boost brakes that it's going to have and also I got one of these like universal little um, you can see the floor mount um, f gas pedal uh, which matches the the brake pedal and is going to complete the look but makes it really clean eliminates the holes in the floor and it makes it easy to update the braking you guys can see from an engine compartment standpoint i've got the hydro boost unit mocked up N nothing is ever simple you can see when i have this mocked up it doesn't fit real nicely so i have to have spacer brackets so that it fits perfectly and then again it mounts too close so the brake pedal linkage that I have is like too close to it. I don't have enough pedal travel, so I'm having to refigure out all that geometry, which any of you guys who have done this and built that out have, have gone through this a million times, no doubt. So just, just one of those little things that you always have to figure out and refigure out and buy a ton of parts. One of the things that did work out really well is this uh, fuel, sorry, the gas pedal linkage there. 
Um, this is just a universal kit. I have it really clean. You can see where it's coming through the firewall right there. It's a cable pull and it just cable pulls real nice straight over and the linkage is all dialed in with my uh, return springs and things. Just a Chevy 350 with an Edelbrock carb, but uh, just real clean linkage there. The other thing um, I picked up, and another tip you guys may or may not have seen this before, and most of you maybe have even used this, and so um, no big deal, but it, it's a little Edelbrock unit that they sell, uh, part number 72280. It, it's, its original function, I think, is as a, like a um, nitrous switch, I think is what they call it. Basically, it mounts to an Edelbrock carb, specifically this one, my 1406. And what it does is it throws a switch based on throttle position. And I'm not going to use it for nitrous, obviously, although how cool would that be? Nitrous on this bad boy. Um, I'm going to use it as a retrofitted kickdown cable for my Turbo 400 transmission. So it, I think it mounts on this side of the carb. I've yet to figure out all that bracketry and geometry. Uh, but that's what I'm going to have over there, so it's really clean. Turbo 350 uses uh, actual, like, linkage kickdown. Um, I think vacuum-actuated kickdown, but the, uh, Turbo 400s were electronically actuated, so that's the right way to get the kickdown going there. Um, you can also see on the firewall, you can see all my welds and all my holes that I sealed up. Again, nothing, nothing's finalized, final ground or anything, but had to cut new holes for a new heater. I've got a 12-volt heater that's going in this thing just to be able to keep it warm. It's tucked up in there. So that'll be nice when I get that done. I'm still going to figure this out. And I've got this um, picked up just basically a universal steel battery mount. The original battery mount is down in the cab on these, like right there. And so what I've got is I'm going to move the, relocate the battery, probably put it somewhere up here so that it's nice and out of the way. It doesn't interfere with the fender that comes down here, but also it doesn't interfere with the engine. Just something here where I can keep it clean out of the way, not, in the, not obviously in the way of those hoses that come out, but something where I can keep my lines really short, get it figured out. But again, you can see some of the work that I've done here, um, the geometry. This is obviously an 82 Chevy GMC one ton frame. And so I've spliced, I custom made all of these um, cab mounts to be able to fit it, welded those in there and then welded in a plate there. Don't, don't judge the um, <laughs> aesthetics of that, but uh, that, that's what mounts the front section that I have sitting over behind me over here, the whole front fenders and front core support and aluminum radiator and things like that. So all in all, it's coming out pretty well. Just still a ton of stuff to do, ton of stuff to do on it. Um, I ripped out all of the windows here, as you can see in the cab. I've got the, the split window in the front, all the glass in the back. I took all that out. When I pour 15, I'm going to pour 15 all these window channels, and really I'm going to pour 15 the entire cab, probably paint paint this area back here, but then just pour 15 in Dynamat um, everywhere else once I get the pour 15 in. Put it, I'll put a headliner up in the top and everything, but um, getting all these window channels dialed in is good because I've got all new gaskets, I've got all new seals, all new weather strip, and all new window glass. So that'll be pretty cool to have in. I'll show you that here next. Oh, here's one other thing. Working in a cab like this, lighting is always a, a tough thing for me. I've got really good shop lights in the shop, right? As you can see, shop lights are really bright. Shop's really nice and bright. Uh, but when you're working in a cab, it's kind of tough to get lights. So what I did is I took this standard four foot LED light, actually same, same one of the ones as I have up high, put little chains on it and I have it hung up straight in the middle of the cab. Just nice and easy, it's always there. I literally walk over and flip on the light over there uh, when I'm ready to, to start working on it. And, and uh, it's a nice light that's always there and helps me um, see the details when I'm working on the cab. So. That's nice and easy. So I'll walk you down here. I'll show you, and again, excuse the mess. This is the door for the truck. I've got the door completely torn apart. I can see why on these vent windows, you guys have seen all these vent windows before. They, there's a ton to them. I mean, literally, there, there's gaskets all the way around. I've got all new gaskets, but there's glass that fits in this little area that has to have what's called glass setting tape to it. There's gaskets and seals. I mean, these are super complicated to work on, which is why I think that most people probably just replace them. A couple hundred bucks just for the actual unit itself to replace it. So um, when you do that on both sides, but it's a ton of work. There's like a ton of little um, uh, um, rivets that actually hold one of these seals on. There's like three different types of seals. So not only is it a ton of money trying to get the um, the, you know, the right gaskets and stuff replaced for them, but it's a ton of work. I can see why people replace the, the entire things all at once, but I basically got the door broke down, uh, kind of a pain in the butt because there's 
what's called um, clutch head screws. You can kind of see it here. Um, let me see if I can show you one of these. That guy right there is a clutch head screw. I don't know if it'll zoom in on that. Anyway, clutch head screws. So they're kind of tough. I, I didn't have screwdrivers that, that actually had that or, or, or bits or sockets. So first thing for me was getting a set of clutch head drivers to be able to take this door apart because they obviously don't do those anymore. But uh, pull the door apart. I've got a ton of this area down here at the bottom that's completely washed out. Um, is down here at the bottom of this edge seam is like always super rusty. Had to drill some things out. I've got a little repair yet that I have to do on that. But overall, the door's in solid shape. But like literally everything needs to be rebuilt. I've got, I've bought new uh, window regulators, one in one side, one in the other. I've got new um, window glass tracks, one for each side. Uh, like I said, I've got all the seals. I've got all the gaskets. I've got literally like boxes and everything over here ready to go. All these kind of seals, stuff that I've never even seen before. <laughs> seals on how to make all that work. Um, there's the column that I'm going to put in here. It's a CPC column. Uh, again, it's the right one for this. It's the right size. I wanted a tilt column and I want to put a, a better wheel than, than what the original wheel was for the truck. So got my tilt column there ready to rock and roll. These are the brackets. I'll show you some of the stuff I've got here. These are the brackets that I purchased that basically they're standoffs for the hydro boost unit. That'll stand off of the firewall, give me the correct geometry that I need. Hopefully that's going to be enough. You can see I've got a ton of a ton of these little guys, these uh, little clevis mount things for the brake pedal, trying to figure out which one's going to make the most sense, which one's going to work well. Um, this guy's going to be at the bottom of the column there. Um, th here's my, obviously, uh, master cylinder and rest of my... Um, black uh, hydro boost lines ready to rock and roll. This is that glass setting tape that I'll be using over here. So overall, just a ton of different stuff. Um, I bought the all new glass kit. Here's one little piece of it right here. That guy, you can see it's the tinted glass that I'm going with, which will be pretty cool. Uh, tinted all the way around. Tinted quarter windows, tinted back window, tinted side glass windows, literally everything. So yeah, that'll be pretty cool. Let's walk you back over here. Um, you can see I've got all of my parts stash. That, I know that's the ugliest thing in the world, but I have all of my parts stash on the back of the truck for the truck. Um, so just to kind of not organize isn't the right word, obviously. Nobody accused me of being organized here, but that's all the stuff. I've got the bed on there. I've got, I'm going to lower the bed another two inches or so. I've got the blazer gas tank that I'm going to stuff between the frame rails. Um, I've got 19.5 inch wheels all the way around on this. I think you guys have probably seen those in a different video before. New fuel sending unit. I'm going to mount all that up. There's my seat that's going in the truck, which I'm pretty excited about. So overall, really good progress, I think. Uh, the next time I show an update on this truck, probably going to be uh, in pour 15 with the seat in, probably some of these interior components, and then it'll just be a matter of getting this engine ready to get fired off. Um, this has kind of been a little bit of a pain. Like I said, this is your basic 350 engine. I bought a um, new alternator, new starter, um, all of those new like accessories. Um, carburetors are used carb, but should be in good shape. New fuel pump, things like that. Um, so now I'm just figuring out how to mount it. Um, this chassis never had a, a V8 in it. it or sorry, it never had a gas V8. It had a diesel engine in it. So I've got the V8 mounts in there, but trying to figure out all the bracketry. I went with that ICT um, alternator bracket. I'm in the process of figuring out the power steering bracket because I'm going to use the original power steering over there, but I'm going to have to retrofit to a, a bracket that'll make sense for this V8 because the bracket on this power steering unit never mounted to a V8. So I'm having to like test custom brackets and things like that. I've got an HEI setup ready to go. I bought one of those little oil pump primers tools to be able to throw into the back to prime the entire thing before before it actually uh, starts it over for the first time so it's not a dry start so that should be good there yeah everything else is pretty much straightforward still have a lot of assembly to go but the cab was really the big thing so that wraps it up that's the that's the update on the you can see the new lift over there too right that was fun got that project lined up next trusty little welder ready to go yeah, so here's the cab. That's the rest of the truck project. Been a ton of fun. Going to continue to be fun. I've got a lot left to go on it. So. so there you have it. That's the truck project. I hope you guys like that update. I'm trying to test out this vlog style setup. I don't know if it's something that you guys like or enjoy. You guys can see certainly how messy my shop is um, and how my workflow is. But again, these projects are just for me. They're not for anybody else. So I'm not held to the strict requirements and standards that uh, most of you guys, shop guys are. 
Um, but anyway, hope you guys enjoyed. Look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. And if you like this truck project, please consider subscribing because I'm going to try to keep some updates going for this in the future, as well as some of the other projects that I have going on around the shop. So guys, thanks so much. Tune in next time. We'll see you. Thanks.